Okay, we'll call to order the uh, meeting of the Budget Advisory Committee today, Thursday, June 16th at 2.01. Do we have a quorum? We do. Shall we do a roll call? We shall. Chair McCloy? Here. Ms. Hall? Here. Mr. Bridgman is absent. He may um, be at a meeting later on. Uh, Ms. Engel? Here. Ms. Major? Uh, Ms. Howard? Here. Okay. Let's dive into the uh, agenda. First item is the election of chair and vice chair. Um, I'll just Mr. make a, a well, statement here. This is a political statement. If I'm chosen, uh, my plan is to do it for one more year. Okay. I love to see turnover and new ideas. Not that my ideas are boring, but it's good, and we have good blood here. So how do we go about doing this? Well, you can do it either way. You can go down if anybody volunteers, um, or you can take nominations from those present. Okay. Throw it out as a volunteer. I'll volunteer. Are we doing chair or vice on. chair first? Pardon me? Are we doing chair or vice chair first? We're doing chair. Okay. It's an ego thing. <laughs> uh, uh, I'll throw out, uh, I'll volunteer again. You you heard me. I'll go for one more year, then I, I don't think anybody's positioned for life. Uh, at, at You could throw me out after one year or put me down in another position, but I'll throw it out. So what's the next step? And everybody votes against everybody me. And we everybody decide. okay? Are there any other nominations or? Okay. So we'll have a motion and a second. I'll second. Who motion? Oh, I'll motion. Oh, okay. I'll motion. Okay. Second. Motion okay. Second. <laughs> okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? No. Nope. Okay. Congratulations. You can leave school. <laughs> your, your, your budget is just cut 10%. Okay, let's go over to the uh, position of vice chair. I will say that uh, Don, who may or may not be here, through the email has indicated he would be willing if, um, if so chosen by the group but put it out to anyone else. What's that now? Don, yes. uh, Don in his email. Don he, Bergman. Oh, oh, Don Bergman. Okay, yeah. yeah. Contact Don, I'm, I'll introduce Don. you to him. <laughs> uh, he had indicated <laughs> that he birthday. may or may not be here today. Okay. May be late. But he's interested but in he doing But he indicated it. that uh, he, would, he would consider it. Right. Certainly. So... Have a motion, or would anyone else? Like yeah, I'll make a motion for for him. Yeah. I'll second this one. How about that? Okay. All in favor? Okay. Aye. All opposed? Congratulations, everybody. You get the ten percent increase too. Yes, he does. <laughs> Plus two percent because he already kind of knew what he was doing. Oh, okay, okay, <laughs> good. Well, let's dive right into the budget presentations. Uh, I do have one that I'll, I need to confer with Cassie on a presentation from last week. We had an individual who kind of said, uh, well, these two items I don't really need. My horns always go up and if somebody volunteers it, then it's probably going to be a cut, but we'll talk later. Okay. Hi, good afternoon. My name is Suzanne Linton. I am the Information Technology Director. I also direct the GIS department and the Performing Arts or the theater downstairs. Um, What's if, GIS, if I might ask? Geographic Information Systems. Got it. That is where we map all of the utilities and assets inside of the city on a information technology database and platform portal on the web. So I guess I'll start with information technology first. And I'm going to go through um, 
the the largest increases that we had, um, just so I can explain to you what they are. Um, the first that you'll see is um, a 52% increase in special pay. And what special pay is, is on-call pay for um, our department. And due to, I'm sure you guys have all um, heard about all of the cybersecurity risks, the increase of ransomware and um, viruses and different, we have so many different hacks that are trying at any given time. We are a 24-7 staff. Um, so we are on call 24-7, and when we get a notification of any type of anything that could remotely be a problem for the city, we're immediately on it. And um, we have never been compromised in the nine years that I have been here. And that is because we are so on the ball with these types of problems that we have. So we make sure safety first always in IT. So that is an increase because we have had an overwhelming, um, just so many, we probably get um, oh, probably five to ten um, different problems during the evenings that we have to attend to immediately to make sure we block different things. So that was the increase there. Um, Could I throw out a question? I know we had a new position. New yeah. position. Yes. What's your Cybersecurity engineer. I always thought that that was going to be a very difficult position to fill at a price. Yes. We well, um, we actually hired internally. And um, the individual that we hired has been here for about five years. His name is Daniel Overson. And um, he was able, I trained him up through the ranks. And he was able to get his certification, which is the highest certification in the world for cybersecurity. It's called the CISSP. And he did get that certification before he took the job for cybersecurity. And he's doing fantastic. He, and a lot in the budget that I'm going to explain to you today, are increases due to our ramping up cybersecurity from all of the all of everywhere we we have really tightened up cybersecurity everywhere and it does show in the budget so moving down um, we have some increases in professional services and other contractual services and I want to explain that just a little bit um, when I first came here we had a lot of consultants for a lot of different things and they were all two hundred and fifty dollars an hour and I found that I was actually doing on-the-job training for these consultants at $250 an hour, and that we actually knew more than they did. And I wasn't happy with that. So I um, found an individual who has been now with the city over 10 years, and we pay him about $25 an hour. He knows our infrastructure, he knows our servers, he knows how we operate, and I'm not paying him $250 an hour. So that worked out really, really well, and I like doing that. I like having people that we can, on a part-time basis, that we can call that know us and that can dive right in. And I'm not paying him $250 an hour. So, so he's a, uh, this person's a part-time? Part-time temporary, correct. And um, so, you know, we use him for server updates, hardening of our servers, making sure that anything, l reviewing logs, because we get so many logs, so many logs. Um, everything that we don't have time to on, you know, a normal day-to-day -day basis, he's just kind of overseeing and making sure that all of our patches are correct. Um, any type of little projects that he's, he's wonderful at that, we can give him that, and I don't have to pay the big money for firewalls or things like that. He can just take over. So um, there was a little bit of an increase in that due to the fact that we have many more servers due to cybersecurity. Um, and then our travel per diem, that only went up because we weren't able to go anywhere for COVID. 
So, you know, we do have some training that we really would like to take depending on how busy we are. If we're, if we're, you know, if we're able to go, we would like to go, but that's not set in stone, but it's just a little bump. And then we have our repairs and maintenance went up 25%. And that was due to our continued Microsoft migration to Office 365. We are migrating to the cloud and that is going to cost, uh, we've got about, oh, I'm gonna say about 35% of the city staff migrated right now. So we're gonna try to get up to 100% um, by the end of this next fiscal year. And we also put some extra money in there to take our virtual servers to a cloud migration. Um, currently, we have um, two separate um, clusters. We have one at City Hall and we have one at the Public Safety Building and they replicate amongst each other. In the event one goes down, the other can take up immediately depending on you know which one is up or down. And um, to be more cost effective, we really do need to migrate those servers virtually to the cloud. I don't want to have to replace another cluster of servers locally. So um, we would like to begin our migration um, with a few servers, make sure that we harden them. Um, we do have to go into the government platform, which is on United States soil. So um, we are going to try and start testing of those systems. That's what we asked for this coming budget year. So the, uh, in, in dollar terms, we're talking about a $75,000 um, increase? Yes, we asked you for see about that being this year, or do you see it being ongoing? It will be ongoing. This, these, all of these, I've, correct. All of this will be an ongoing fee. But um, we did cost comparisons, and each of our server clusters were about one hundred and thirty thousand dollars each, and. Um, we have to replace those every three to five years. And then the hard drives, we have many, many hard drives that are in, they fail all the time. We have to, so all of the maintenance upkeep having to do with physical servers, and we have many, many, many servers. So we actually took all of those individual servers, we virtualized them into the two separate clusters. So we took 60 servers over here and another 75 servers, physical units. We virtualized them into three servers on each side. So now we only have six units that combine all the servers. And now we would like to take those to the cloud, but there will be a fee for that and an ongoing maintenance fee and for Microsoft. How many Office users, Office 365 users do you have? Um, right now, we have about 150, but we will have 250 once we do migrate everyone. But not all of them need all of the services. We have some users that only need email. They don't use Microsoft Word. You know, if you work in public works, maybe you're not doing any data processing. You just need, you know, you need your email so you can communicate. So that license will be a little bit less but we have not migrated any of those users yet. We have an Exchange server on premises that we put them on. But when we do go to the cloud, we will migrate all of them over. So does that 75,000 include everyone or is that just who's That this year? only includes 125, that 75,000. Can you define the cloud, like what vendor is associated with the cloud? Sure. Um, well, the cloud is depending on what vendor you use. You could use Amazon Cloud Services. You could use Microsoft Services. Currently, right now, we have to use government services through Microsoft. And it's a special division where it's secured and only United States citizens work on our servers, and it's only in the continental United States. What's other exit fees if you change? we can't change because we're a government entity. That's so, 
Yeah, at present, we could go to Amazon, AWS, which is another cloud broker, but I wasn't, uh, for FDLE purposes, um, I wasn't happy with, they're in the beta stages of getting certified, and I wasn't really happy with the way that their security was. I was very comfortable with United States soil, um, United States citizens, and the security that was with Microsoft. So we are in a separate partition with all the other government agencies and police departments in so, Microsoft. So are those fees locked in just for a year, or can they can they increase them by twenty five percent? They're next three year. year. They're three year terms. Okay. So the the price is locked in for three years, and we do get. I know it it looks like a big dollar amount, but we do get really good rates because we're a government agency. So you know, if if we were just a regular commercial entity, it would be a lot more. But um, going to the cloud has a lot of, of different functionality that's wonderful for collaboration. Um, for instance, right now, if, if we didn't go to the cloud, you can only have one person working on a file at one time. Yeah. When we go to the cloud, Teams, yeah. all of you guys can go into one document and you can see as you're modifying the file, you can see who's doing it and it automatically saves. And you going towards our mobility approach for the future and for disaster recovery, you could be in a hotel, you could be in France, you could be anywhere in the world accessing this file and monitoring and taking care of it instead of being right here. So we, we definitely are on a path to mobility here at the city. Um, and Microsoft 365 is the way that we are migrating there. So there will be more, there will be an increase next year when we do increase our licenses. Um, but the, the increase should only be about 25000 because we've already paid for all of the other services. We just have to have the additional licenses for the other ones that we migrate. Are they named user licenses or are they shared? They are named user licenses. Okay. Yes. They are not shared. So I have a question. Um, so it, you said uh, next year you expect it to sort of go up. Do you... Two questions, actually. <laughs> are we, we're, we generally are largely in line with other uh, fully managed cities, so Correct. I'm sure, yeah, maybe if you have any details on that, if we're kind of in line with some of the other cities. And the second question, um, would you expect when we do get, migrate, get rid of some of the hardware, or wh whatever you're sort of managing now, that mm -hmm. there would be a reduction at some point? Right. In, in reduction in? In the, just in, the cost, in like as we cost. enhance. Oh, absolutely. Or would you anticipate a reduction, getting rid of the old stuff, going on to the new at some point in the future? Right. Well, the reduction would be we won't have to replace those two gigantic server clusters that we have. Okay. They will no five. longer be there. So the, you know, right now we have climate control data centers that we have to maintain. We have these these devices we have to have spare parts for, we make sure everything has to run, I have to make sure everything's up. When it's in the cloud, I just need to make sure I have, I have good internet connectivity and redundancy. You know, I have three different internet sources. If one goes down, the other automatically pops right in. You guys don't even see it. So the reduction of all of that goes away. And for disaster recovery, if we get hit by a hurricane, we simply drive to Georgia and we log right on. You know, right now our plan is we have to get with the fire department, mm -hmm. put our servers in the truck and drive, you know. So, yes, we do see, we're going to see a reduction cool. at some point, but we have to get there first. And your other question, where are we at in terms of all other cities? We are way ahead okay. of all other cities. Um, and we are way ahead because we were very forward thinking mm -hmm. and we have a strategic plan that we follow going towards the future. We, we update it annually. We make sure that we look at everything that we're doing and we plan towards where our goals are. So we are way ahead and we're very proud of that too. And it does work out. It does work out. We're very stable, which is wonderful. Several other, um, people who've been before us in the last couple of weeks have mentioned 
trouble with um, keeping employees and they're leaving because of the ability to work remotely elsewhere, things like that. With the cloud mi migration, you mentioned mobility. Is that part of the future that you that will help with that, or is that something that, from a government standpoint, can't be done? Um, okay. Well, there's, you know, I can speak to that just a, a little bit, but. Um, we are working towards a platform. You know, when we were at COVID, everyone was working from home. We we seamlessly we're ready for we were ready for that. Everyone can go home and work from home seamlessly right now. But as a government entity, especially in my staff, also even IT, we can work from home, and you guys don't even know we're there. We've got our phone. We've got you know Zoom. We can get into all of your systems. But I like a more physical approach. If you have a problem, I want to walk down. I want to go see you. I want to see what's going on. I want to assess the situation. You know, so being in government, we're here for the citizens. So I do feel that, that um, even though, you know, a lot of people like to work from home, I do think that as a government entity and we are working for the citizens, we do need to be physically present the majority of the time. Okay, going moving down through the numbers, two numbers jump out. I uh, almost hate to ask this question because interdepartment allocation, 16000 Okay, oh. that's, that's Ron Herring. <laughs> um, <laughs> I had the feeling it was going to be. <laughs> but I can tell working. you a little bit what that is. The library, um, at our current library, we have um, 7D computers at our library, okay. um, which is quite a bit. And they that inner office allocation is from the library. And there was a reduction in computers. I actually got them to bring it down to about 50 computers this year. So I think that's why it's less. And that ends up being, well, it's less and in, that in turn increases our budget. I don't remember if you remember the last meeting where I was trying to explain the interdepartment That's why I was almost and, and we were going to go back and revisit it because I think a lot of our expenses when we're figuring the charges for fire and library were down, but we don't know if it's because of the COVID year and we we're going to go back and revisit that, maybe do a five-year average of those charges. But since it went down, it increases Suzanne's budget. That's why, you, why you're seeing that 16000 It's perfectly logical. Okay. Uh, uh, and the uh, last item that's jumping, operating supplies mm -hmm. up 62,000, and this may be mere coincidence, but back in the detail, there's one item, just happens to be 62,000, replacement data slash... Voice over VoIP. IP, yes. Okay. Yes, that is a replacement of our switches. Is that a direct correlation? Correct. That is the increase. The replacement of the VoIP and data switches. VoIPs are our city phones, okay. and um, the data switches are all of our Cat5 cabling that connects everything throughout the city. Our switches are over 10 years old, and they are end of life, and they need to be replaced. So we do need to do that this year. So one timer then? Yes. Well, one time for, it should be about five to seven years, but I always squeak it a little more. One time, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's not an ongoing. Right. And that's really it for the um, increases throughout my budget um, for GIS and theater. The only increase in theater was um, we need a few more ADA compliance devices for the performances, and it was just a minuscule increase. Yes. Back, back to user licenses. Um, yes. So are all user licenses created equal? Are they full functionality, or do you do you do they get everything with their user license, or do they have to have modular functionality? They are modular. So some of our licenses, some of our users get everything because they use everything, but some of our users only use email. So we don't want to give them the whole package. We only need to give them a license for email because that's all they need. So we go through and we have only migrated the people that use everything right now because we wanted to test everything out before we bring the others on board. So what is a user license for email cost? Oh, it's like $16. It's very minuscule. It's, it's not that much at all. It's very, it's, it's very inexpensive. But I didn't want to bring those on yet. We'll wait until we get it all done. 
questions? Any other? Any other questions? Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, yeah. Okay. Next up, the fire department. Good and afternoon. The president of my neighborhood. <laughs> but you're acting in turn in as the fire. <laughs> All right. Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Scott Young. I'm the fire chief. Brought a couple people with me. Melissa, our executive assistant, who helps run the budget for us, and Deputy Chief Meisner, the operations chief. So I just have a quick little presentation here. I won't take that long and get to as many questions you want. As you can see, our proposed budget is just a little over $6.4 million. Uh, here's a breakdown of the last five years, and you can see how it has uh, gone up. It's gone up almost a million dollars in the last five years. Most of that is uh, due to uh, personnel services, salaries, pensions, etc. costs for that. Uh, here's a breakdown of our budgeted vehicles. Uh, this year we have our new Pierce engine that we are uh, expecting to show up uh, probably in about a month. Uh, it's been a little over a year to get it in. Uh, the city is doing a uh, five-year lease on the vehicle, a payment of uh, 178000 of over five years. The first payment is due a month after it's delivered. Uh, and as you can see there, 9.6% excuse me, 9.6% of that is also paid by the uh, Pinellas County uh, of the truck. The latter truck is also a lease. Um, it is going to have its fourth payment of $239,000 this year. It is also a five-year lease, and again, this county pays 9.6% of that uh, payment each year. We just uh, got approved uh, generously by the commission to order another engine. Uh, we just did this in the last couple months. Uh, the reason we did it a little earlier than we would anticipate is because the production time of these trucks now is over two years. Okay. Um, we proactively looked at it. Uh, the finance director, Ron, and I talked about it. Uh, if we were going to do a lease, we felt we were going to need to do it because we kept hearing about the interest rates going up. Thank God, looking at today, we probably did the right thing. Uh, we're paying like 3% interest on this truck, uh, but it'll be two years before we have to make the big payments. Uh, next year, we'll have to make an interest-only payment of the 27000 and then when the truck arrives, a month after that, we'll make the first payment. So th thankfully, we looked ahead, and that, that'll uh, coincide with the other payments. The ladder truck payment should be done then, so we won't have three payments. We'll only have two, and that's where we've been trying to keep it, where we only have no more than two payments on any of the trucks. But with the lead time, we had to act. Those are the only other vehicles we have in the budget. You can see what's projected coming up over the next few years. I don't believe we'll have another payment. Uh, need to order a truck till about 2026, depending, again, what happens on lead times. We might have to readjust that if need. Hopefully they'll come back down to a normal one year. But So here's how the, some, some of our funding works. We get money from Pinellas County. Uh, we have an EMS contract with Pinellas County to provide uh, uh, emergency medical services for the citizens. The county pays $1.7 million uh, for us. Uh, they give us each year. That's um, for EMS supplies. They pay for nine paramedics uh, in our department. Uh, what we budgeted last year, this is a 4.41% increase from last year. We also get money from Pinellas County for a fire contract. Uh, we're getting $562,000 uh, this year. This is up 7.31% from last year. This is to cover fire uh, areas of the, uh, unincorporated areas within our city. So they give us uh, money for... Uh, uh, for that. That's the money that comes uh, for the um, trucks and stuff like that out of the fire contract. That's what it's based on. We also get some specialty money that we've been working on over the last few years to, from the county. Uh, we get uh, for our fire boat, they give us $10,000 a year for maintenance and things for our fire boat, $5,000 for our small marine unit. And new this year is $15,000 for our new dive team that we're putting in place. Uh, there's only two other dive teams in Pinellas County. There's one in St. Pete, one in Clearwater, and now Tarpon will be the third one. So we'll have a north, south, and mid-county. So we're working on that. Uh, they just gave us about 20, a little over $20,000 to get it started, uh, which we're working on now. And uh, from this point forward, we'll get 15000 So hopefully that team is up and running the next uh, by the end of the year. 
So here's our personnel expenditures uh, from the last uh, couple of years. Uh, we 2021, we were at 4.9. This year, we were at 5.4. Again, personnel services costs are part of the overtime pays, uh, tax, uh, Social Security taxes, retirement benefits, health insurance, et cetera. Our operating expenditures uh, this year are $950,000. You can see where it was over the last couple of years. So not a huge increase. We've been trying to keep the cost down the best we can. <coughs> So here's how the budget really breaks down. The county funding is about $2.3 million. That's for the fire and EMS contracts that we have. The city's portion of our budget is $4.1 million. And that's where we come up with our four point, I mean, our $6.4 million budget. And with that, I can answer any type of questions you might have. Scott, just looking at the, the detail, and I know you have a combination of, mm -hmm. I'm going to call it salaries and then the union. Uh, it's showing personnel service in total up about 7%. Correct. Uh, special pay is up 11%. Is this some change in the contract? The 11%, Ron, that would be just the... Are you sure we'll check your ruler there, maybe? Yeah. Uh, no, I'm, I'm sorry. You're right. My ruler didn't. I didn't see it either. That's why I was like, Rami, you better answer this it's one. It's the overtime pay. Overtime sorry, pay is we've one. increased our overtime budget this year. We asked to have that increased. Overtime is a, is a tough cookie with fire and police. Um, you never know what's going to happen. Uh, hurricanes come in. Uh, FMLA. I have a young department. Lots of babies happening over there. So people are taking their 12 weeks. We just happen to have, in the last couple of years, three or four people out at one time. So they're gone for 12 weeks. We have to backfill all those positions. Unlike a lot of jobs, somebody calls out sick, you know, they're just gone for the day. When somebody in our age, uh, business calls out sick, we have to call somebody back in. That way we keep the trucks rolling. So overtime's a real tough uh, thing for police and fire. Um, for us to come under budget, I haven't seen that. So we're trying to get a handle on what we are spending, but we've been increasing it over the last couple of years, so we've come in a little bit closer to our goal of what the budget is. What's the average salary for one of your, your head count there? Ooh, the average salary in our department, well, starting pay for most of the paramedics is right around fifty-one, fifty-two thousand. Right. Uh, most of the, the uh, average would probably be in the 60s, 70,000s, so after overtimes and everything. So you couldn't add a few more people? I'm sorry? Three, you couldn't add a few more people for that 350,000 overtime? You could, but you're still going to have overtime. Because once you start adding, I have to start looking at the vacation times, sick times. How's that going to affect it? Am I still going to be calling back? It, it does help. I will tell you that right now we are waiting on hearing from a safer grant that we have out, waiting. A couple, about three, four years ago, we applied for a safer grant through FEMA to add, add additional people. We were lucky enough to get it. How that works is FEMA, for the first two years, pays 75% of salary and benefits for those people. The third year, it drops down to 35%, and then the fourth year, the city picks up the whole tab. That is now done. So we, those people that we hired back then, the city does take the full cost of them. We just applied for another one of those for three more people. We hope before the budget goes into place, we'll have approval for that. And uh, that's for three people. And again, it'll be 75, 75, and 35 to increase our staffing. What we're trying to do is get these people on so we can also put another unit in service that we just got approved for by the county for the vehicle alone, uh, which is about two years out to get. So once the county's budget is approved, we'll purchase the vehicle and they'll reimburse us for this vehicle. It'll be a rescue unit. So with those additional people, I will be able to put that in the service and hopefully in a couple years when it, when it arrives. So, Is there a certain standard number of people per population? Or how we, do you decide? If it, it is. We, we, we try to, the national average is about 1.8, if I'm correct, per thousand. So we're right in that mark of where we're supposed to be, just a little below, but uh, we've been increasing it slowly. Uh, it's not cheap to put a uh, firefighter on the average cost is about a little over a hundred thousand dollars a year with benefits and everything so three firefighters you're looking at three hundred thousand plus to put on so to budget that it's 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 long-term thinking so 
You can take it out of reserves, you can do all that, but then how do you fund it from that point forward? How do you pay for it? So. Your workers' comp is up quite a bit. Is that due to claims or? That would be a wrong question. <laughs> yeah, we've got budgeted. We don't have the final estimates yet, so we've I put in a tentative estimate of 10% increase until we get, we actually know from the uh, insurance company what the increase is gonna be. I was looking at the 30%. Yeah, and I think that's part of the uh, the employees that came over when the safer grant people moved over and stuff there they were in a separate fund I before see. and then the interest only payment is that what's driving up the operating supplies is that where that is or is that interest only payment is it reflected in here are you talking on 50, line 52 yes 52 part of that the cost increase of the 32,000 is for computers that uh, IT wanted us to get we have to update some computers in our uh, uh, trucks that uh, are now end of life all of our uh, fire apparatus has computers that are linked to the county it gives us routing information call information they're coming up to be replaced and then we're also having to replace some of the mattresses at the one station because they're 10 plus almost 15 years old that's, uh, that's where you'll see the cost increase i don't know if you remember when we changed the capitalization threshold from one thousand mm -hmm. dollars but we capitalized to five thousand so now we're seeing stuff that's moving into that 0.52 gotcha. operating supplies used it used to be in capital them. before like the computers and that was a good logical change to up the higher limit. Is that vehicle fuel line item enough? Considering you, well, well, I guess we'll see. <laughs> it's hard to tell at this point. Right now, uh, diesel is not cheap. That's what most of our vehicles run on, the trucks. Um, uh, we're having to use, uh, going out to the stations right now, and I'm signing all the uh, credit card uh, purchases, and on an average day, the, each truck's probably putting in $100 plus every day. Uh, depending on how busy are that they are that day. We never let our trucks go down below half a tank because of uh, the possibility of them running at a fire all night long. We don't want to have them below half. So they, they have a policy to fill them at half. So, it's not, yeah, hopefully, uh, hopefully it levels off. So We did budget an increase, but now as they keep increasing, I don't know if I need to revisit that now, now that yeah. diesel's at 570 a gallon. Yeah, yeah. Hopefully. If it keeps going up, we'll have to go back to the horse-drawn carriages and start doing it that way. You know, buy hay, it might be cheaper. <laughs> Any other questions for Scott? No, no questions. I just want to say thank you. This presentation was very thorough. Thank you. Very helpful. Thank you. Thank you, Scott. Thank you. Procurement. Oh, I'm Janina Lewis, Procurement Services Director. Um, basically, we are a relatively small department. Um, there's been no major changes to our budget except for the training. Um, the reason I'm requesting the increase in the training is because right now I am down one person and we have not been able to fill the position and I'm afraid I'm going to have to take someone that I'm going to have to bring up to speed. So I've requested the travel and the training uh, fees to be increased. Just talking openly, why don't you think you can fill that position? It's okay. Uh, you, you I, can speak I think I'm going to fill it. Or... However, I don't think I'm going to fill it with the level that I want uh, experience-wise, which is basically, you know, maybe the person has one or two years experience, but they're not like a fully trained, um, you know, ready-to-go operational person. What's the salary on a good procurement person? Uh, we run anywhere from a range of uh, 47000 to 65000 I believe. That's the average.
And if you're looking at the interdepartmental interdepartmental. allocation, we'll we'll revisit that and we'll reduce that for you. (laughs) What trends do you see coming up in procurement um, that may impact the budget? As far as my department? Or, okay. Uh, In my department, I. Actually, I see some good trends. One trend is that we are no longer going to be required to do legal ads for every um, construction bid we do. Uh, it'll only be a one-time ad a year, which is right now running us $185 an ad. Hmm. Um, so with that decrease, that'll take a lot out of all of our construction bids because right now that's a cost that we put forward, usually out of the project, but not out of our department, but we budget for it. Um, the other ones I see are postage. We're doing a lot more electronic um, transactions, so that's going to be going away in the near future. Um, Those are basically our, like, top. I wish I could say paper would go away, but it's not going away yet. (laughs) So we're we're working on paperless. Um, We have gone um, electronic files in our office this past fiscal year. We started um, no more paper folders, so that's been an accomplishment that we've been working on. That's great. Do you have vendors pay with credit cards such that you get a rebate back here to the city? Uh, We do. Uh, Every year, um, it's based off the consortium of the state contract. And what we normally get back is roughly around um, anywhere from $50,000 to $55,000 has been the average. So what requires a vendor to pay for using a credit card? Um, Nothing requires them. We ask if they're willing to accept the option of payment by credit card and if they accept it. We try to go that route to get the biggest rebate back for the city. Some of my municipalities require that I pay by credit card. I have 200 as clients, so I was just curious. There may be, like, um, we've tried to initiate anything under $1,000 um, to be paid with the credit card. But the problem is right now with the small business vendors, they are getting, um, how do I say it, attacked by the Visa people or the MasterCard people on their surcharges. So I, I choose not to force that on small business vendors or any vendors because, it, you know, if they don't want to pay the fee to those banking companies, you know, why should I make them pay it? Um, you know, we're not that large that we can't just do the transaction through the purchase order with a check. You may have covered this, but I, I, I'm, I'm looking under the personnel services, regular salaries and wages are down pretty significantly, 7,000, 7,200 versus the 22 budget. That's the Jay turnover. Uh, I think what you're seeing is when uh, Jay Jackis, the former director, retired, yes. his salary was a little bit more than mine. Okay. It's a very That's diplomatic that. answer. <laughs> <laughs> Why is that? Uh, he had been here longer, and um, it's just through experience and time. But you have the same duties. Correct. Mm. But I have not been with the city as long as Jay had when he took the position. You know, I, th- I think another thing is we got a vacant position and we have a new person that's in the other position. There's some Correct. salary adjustments with those with product, those two positions down a little bit. So. Yes. Yeah. I'm, uh, questions, questions? No, further from my side, no, that was. Okay. Good presentation. Yeah, thank you for the okay. overview thank on you. trends. Thank Good afternoon. I'm Diane Wood. Hi. I'm the Diane? Director of Cultural and Civic Services Department, and uh, under my uh, uh, department is the library as well as Tarpon Arts, which is our performing arts um, venues. Um, I do have our current season brochure and our four venues up here for you. I would be happy to pass those out if you'd like. Um, I, 
What I would like to do, if, with your permission, is let uh, Carrie talk about the library first, and then I'll address the performing arts aspect of it. Carrie? Hello, I'm Carrie Rupp Calvis, Library Director. Um, and uh, I'll go over a little bit about our budget and how we're a little different than some of the other city budgets. You may notice in there we have several uh, lines that say interdepartmental allocation. The reason for this is um, to show the true cost of running the library for credit on the county library system because we're part of uh, the Pinellas Public Library Cooperative and they collect um, taxes from unincorporated county and there's a formula and they divide it out to the different member libraries and it's based on um, how much your city or uh, you know, East Lake and Palm Harbor also are in it, but how much your, your city or governing body spends on the library. So we actually, in our budget, uh, spell out how much is spent for uh, procurement and IT and then for Diane's budget and building maintenance and all that stuff. So you can see the true cost of uh, what it takes to run the library. And that's those different inter interdepartmental allocations on the on their budget. Um, and the the rest more that of it, you can justify, the more you get back. And that's why the opposite, where we saw IT go up, you can see libraries gone down because we were just using the pre previous year, which was down in the items we measured with. That's why I say I think we're going to go back and go more over a five-year period and bring these back up to where they usually are. Wait, can, I'm sorry. Can you walk me through that one more time? I, I didn't. I didn't appreciate what you just said. For the uh, allocation? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we go like Carrie was saying. We, every year we, we go through procurement. We go by the number of purchase orders, finance, how much time we spent, IT, repairs and maintenance. Oh, you're talking and we about have for a, interdepartmental allocation now? Or yes, we do that okay, for fire okay. and we do that for library. And as, as Carrie was saying, we put these administrative charges so oh, we can yeah, charge them to the library. <laughs> The more we have expenses that legitimate expenses here, the more money we get from the county for library, the more money we get from the county for the fire department. It's we, we put these admin expenses in there. That's why we charge Carrie's department, but then we credit fire department procurement for those services are providing for the, the library and the fire department. Those are the only two departments we do this for. And you're going to because we get county funding for them. Yeah. Okay. And you're planning building it back up a little bit. Yes. Okay. Got it. Thank you. <laughs> Um, uh, the rest of it um, in the operating expenses are what um, I actually um, oversee and have control over. The only real changes um, you may notice from um, past years is um, we have an increase in rents and leases. Um, we have our copier that is um, definitely at its end of life. <laughs> um, we owned it. We purchased it many years ago. Um, it's hard to even get replacement parts for it. So now rather than purchase another one, we're going with um, the city plan. A lot of uh, departments are leasing them because then you get the, uh, uh, the maintenance and other things included. So that's a new uh, item in our budget this year because we're going to be uh, replacing that uh, well, you old can't malfunction just go one. Out and catch a squirrel. And <laughs> <laughs> so... So um, that was something new. And then I think postage had been left at one time, and so that's been added in, too, so that when you're looking at the things where the increases, um, those are a couple things that might uh, you might notice. Um, and uh, I, I do both the library and the library memorial. The library memorial uh, accounts for all donations to the library. Primarily, it's funded by our friends of the library. Uh, we're very fortunate to have a... Um, Friends Library Group with a, uh, a healthy budget. Years ago, we had a donor who had given $400,000 to the Friends. So we get an annual donation from the Friends, and it, it varies from year to year. Usually, my projected uh, donations amount is um, what I've gotten from them. At the board meeting, the Friends will tell me, this is what we anticipate giving you uh, this, this fiscal year, and that's what I go by. And um, this year, it's down a little bit because right now their investments are down. So that's why it's 20000 had been uh, higher in the past years. Uh, they said it, it's subject to go up, but <laughs> they wanted to at least give me a minimum that to go with. So that's what that's uh, primarily about. But also, just any time someone um, does a book memorial or buys a brick in front of the library, that also goes into the memorial things. And we have had also uh, instances in the past where people pass away and leave money to the library, and that's what also makes up that library memorial account. Um, we do have some vacant positions, which we're working on um, filling. Uh, I have someone starting in just a week and then more coming after that. Um, so that also will be um, 
might show a little bit different on our personnel, um, much like I think Janina had said, we also had somebody retire um, who had been with the city for 35 years. So um, that the salary might be a little, there's a little lower in salaries too because that person had been there for many, many years and we're gonna be hiring, uh, well, we've just hired a new person to fill that position. So, so. how many unfilled position? Um, Excluding this one, the, the person that's going to start soon. Um, currently, it's uh, four. We have two part time and two full time, and we have uh, uh, one full timer starting next week. And then we've got we've done interviews, and we just need to get them through the whole hiring process of doing the background checks and physicals and uh, things like that. Oh, one other thing um, to mention, just also is different from last year, which we kind of already addressed this if you were part of it last year. We at one point had two part-time custodians in the library budget, and those positions um, in this past, in, in this current fiscal year, were migrated over to uh, Public Works to one full-time custodian, and that full-time custodian position, they're actively working on filling that, and that is also gonna be taking care of um, the library as well as some other city facilities. So at one point we did have 20 um, employees and now we have 18 because those two part-time got converted to one full-time under the public works budget. All right, one more for me while he's right. reading. Oh, oh. Sure. <laughs> I'm thinking. So um, the capital improvements, didn't you didn't end up doing that and you're planning on bringing it back oh yes thank you because that's not in the library and library memorial which um, I'm split slated to talk about today actually it is in the library memorial we do have a hundred thousand um, dollars that uh, was in this current budget and it's being carried over to our 2023 budget okay. for library improvements and in the library impact fees um, which Ron is more the expert on we have four hundred thousand dollars there that was budgeted for this year and it's being carried out in Carried to uh, the 2023, we did put forward a grant to the state. Um, we had to have uh, matching funds. The maximum grant amount was uh, $500,000. And with the 100,000 in donations and the 400,000 in impact funds, we had the matching funds to do that. Unfortunately, we weren't funded. In fact, none of the libraries in the state were funded this year, but we do have the opportunity to roll that over into the next, um, next year and, and have a chance to try for those grant funds again. Okay, and then the impact fees is what? Remind me again. Um, I, I can tell you, I, I know a little bit, but like I said, Ron's the expert on- Library impact fees? Yeah. Yeah, so we budgeted for it this year and it doesn't sound like it's gonna be spent 500,000 total, $100,000 in donations, 400,000 impact fees. In the next edition of the budget, we'll probably have that in there because I thought maybe it was gonna be done this year. I'm not sure, but- uh, The impact fees are coming from um, when, when you have new construction, new homes and stuff, every home gets assessed an impact fee. Okay, Library, thank police, you. Right. recreation, yeah. that's, transfer. That's the yeah. bit I was missing there. Um, Sorry about that. <laughs> okay, so and then next year you'll do a large renovation project, hopefully. Yes. Hopefully. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, well, we're, we'll, we'll try. We can see about, try, we're going to be um, working with the commission to see about uh, possibly trying for that grant again. But if not, we would like to at least do something what we can do with our current um facility because we are 25 years old this year in fact our 25th anniversary um, so but we will be talking with the commission when we have our budget meetings with them you know there's certain things we try for grants for and we try several of those and go a library and their renovations it may be a point we've tried and it may be as we're looking at priorities um, it may be on the list of priorities we don't wait for another year and then if we get a failure then we're two years behind so that may be an item for the city to consider um, we, you know, especially with some of the new sources of money we got, um, and that'll probably be a decision when you see our, our meetings with the commission on the budget. It, it, I think it's getting close to time where we need to do it. We tried for the grant money and, uh, we might just need to be a time we need to do it for the library as much as it gets used and yeah. the, the use by the public and the importance of it yeah, well, it's I'm about, sure it's about that time. Yeah, so totally. you have a ballpark idea what half, you know, we talked about half a million what the library needs or is it well we we to are going to be we are going to be updating determined. our construction costs because yes. when we had applied for the grant last year um we had done just a million knowing it probably a, more than that and then now we are in the process we're going to be updating all the costs it, yeah because it was, it was gonna be five hundred thousand from the state and five hundred thousand from what we had here like so. it, like everything we're but, gonna have to, we may have to scale back and 
we'll get to another time as we see things. And as I learned at the State City Managers Conference that every city in this state is going through now, um, the estimates four or five months ago that you get around to doing bids for, they're doubling, they're tripling. And uh, so we've got we've, we've to go back in this whole budget and account for that. Or scaling down what we had planned to do, right. um, scale that down to meet the million. Right, right now that million might cost a million and a half, million three quarters. We just might have to scale and maybe have another phase and do one of that. But um, every, every city is being faced with, and you can see it if you watch Tuesday night's meeting with the clerk's building that jumped over a million dollars. Um, um, from the bids and what we intend, just for supply, the supply lines, the you know places losing money. It, it, it's it's all over the state, and every city is being hit with it. And that's the number one things that uh, <laughs> of nightmares for city managers and trying to put together budgets and projects and stuff. So there'll be a lot of talk about that. You'll be hearing from from us and the future on that. And and looking at things, we're doing that with the road project, even though we got the state money to finish Mango, Mango Street all the way to 19. Right. Um, we know those costs aren't going to be accurate now, too. Those, we already know they're going to be way up. So we may have to scale some things down on phase two and do a phase three later on to do. Um, but that's what we're going to do on about every project that we're looking at. And uh, because Nobody sees these times getting better anytime soon, so we've just got to adapt and, and adapt to that. And that's what a lot you'll be hearing the next year. Um, you'll be hearing a lot of that. Makes sense. Makes sense. Wow. Just, Mark, Mark, you're a ray of sunshine. No, I, that's reality. <laughs> that's reality, and you got to deal with reality. Okay, anything more on the library? Any other questions? No, not from my side. All right, we'll take a quick break. All right, okay. go ahead. <laughs> thank you. Okay, thank you. Again, um, my name's Di Diane. Hey. <laughs> and now we're moving on to performing arts. Um, we have um, four venues. Uh, we have, of course, the Performing Arts Center, which is downstairs, and we have... Um, about you know 300 seats in there, and then we have the cultural center, um, which has 70 a 70 seat theater. We have the Heritage Museum, and of course, the Safford House Museum. And um, as you know, due to um, COVID, the performing arts industry has taken a big hit over the last two years. Um, fortunately, this season um, we're coming back, and we were thrilled um, to see that. You know, we had a lot of sellout shows again, and um, but the minute that you know the pandemic rears its ugly head again in the news, um, you know people kind of stay home a little bit more so than usual. But we're getting to the end of the season. But what I wanted to um, point out to you is that you know the fiscal year for the city starts October first. However, our season goes from. We start our, our new season for performing arts in October, and we go with um, events and performances all the way through July. So really what we're gearing up for now is the new 22-23 20, uh, season. And so we always announce that in August. And so you might see some of our revenues being you know, a little bit low at this point, but what happens is we get a big influx of revenue in August because everybody's anticipating. We're having our last show the end of July, and then everybody anticipates the new season. We're already getting questions like, when is the brochure coming out? So that's when we're going to make up a whole lot of you know, revenue. And um, you know things are definitely looking up. So I'm very pleased with that. But I just want to explain to you how you know, we go, because usually it looks like, you know, where is the money, you know? But it's coming, it's coming, don't worry. <laughs> so anyway, what questions can I answer for you? Tell me what the best way to look at the budget. I know we have all the individual areas like well, the, the only Stafford House culture over there. I'm one gonna... thing that I um, wanted to mention, um, you'll see like an increase um, primarily in 1602 52 where we have you know more than we normally would in operating supplies 
We are trying to, um, the cultural center was closed for many, you know, a couple years with the um, exterior renovation. And so now that it's open, um, Tarpon Arts as well as the library, we're both doing um, events in there. Um, so we want to utilize it to its maximum capacity. So there's some, ex there's some, um, a couple rooms upstairs that, um, you know, we can put in, like, have a nice meeting room for people to come from, like, the Tarpon Arts Association or the, hyster uh, the Historical Society, you know. So they could come and utilize that room and have meetings as well as, you know, internal departmental meetings and things there, too. Um, so we want to go ahead and furnish that, and um, uh, Carrie's going to be, you know, possibly buying some additional chairs that we can store there. But there's also an issue with um, that we would like to have a doorbell and maybe some video installed because being a two-story um, venue, it, you know, it's hard to keep track of things that are going on there. And we have quite a few events. So we wanted to make some improvements and um, also some things in our Heritage Museum office because all of my employees, I have five full-time employees and uh, three part-time employees. And um, we're all kind of pretty much housed at the Heritage Museum. And then we um, are at the Performing Arts Center and the Cultural Center and uh, Safford House when we're open and we have events and performances. So, so there's a little bit more of the operating supplies uh, increase there. And then we haven't utilized a lot of our printing budget because, um, you know, we always do the printing now. In fact, I was just talking to the printer today and he was telling me, bemoaning his, you know, the issues about supply with the paper supply. So we were discussing, you know, when we were going to get the brochure to him so they can get it to us by August 1st. And um, so that's when, you know, my printing costs will go up a little bit because we do mail to um, our patrons that request it and uh, we also mail to uh, our, um, our membership. So. Um, those are the, really the only significant increases, increases that I have that are different that you, you might notice. Donations have also kind of been low, um, mostly because you know, the museums, the Heritage Museum and the Safford House Museum, we, we charge a minimal amount for people to come in and do the tours and everything. It's $5, and then for Tarpon Springs residents, it's $3 per venue. So, but you know, it's like when you're, you're paying to come into a, a facility, it's like, it doesn't, you know, their mind is not on, okay, well, we'd love to give you another donation. So with our performing arts um, and our ticket sales, we do have that right on the screen so people can go ahead and donate, you know, when they're buying their tickets. However, what we thought we would do moving forward is do like a QR code and just put like a little sign there at the venues and say, you know, if you'd like, to, you know, if you had a great experience and you'd like to donate more to, you know, Tarpon Arts, please use this code and, you know, and it'll take it, them right to our uh, ticket sales um, a website. So, Safford House. Yes. There had been discussions, I'll just say discussions to use the play more, about moving it you know, to that area yes. uh, where the economic development is that a dead, uh, is a dead issue? She She's smart because she gets out of that one and leaves that with me to deal with <laughs> and stuff. So <laughs> she, runs, she runs appropriately for that and that me to Today, with the it, it it is not feasible. With the cost of it before when we were looking at it. right now, it would be something where things would have to change. I don't think the feasibility of cost um, it's on the back burner for now. Way back burner. <laughs> well, and I'll add just the fact that people love the Safford House, and I would hate to have it closed for any length of time because it's a real tourist attraction for Tarpon Springs, and we do get a lot of usage out of it. And we have a wonderful popular popular event in, in uh, Christmas time. Um, we have the Victorian Christmas, and it's always sold out. People love it. Yeah. 
We uh, decorate in November, and people can come and see the Safford House decorated in all its glory until Epiphany. Maybe we need to do Halloween. Well, I tried that. Christmas. I tried that. He'll give me the evil eye because I had to cancel a <laughs> Halloween event. I know it would be perfect, right? Yeah. But um, there's so many free events for Halloween. And, okay. you know, mine, you know, I'm a revenue producing segment. So, <laughs> so anyway, um, you know, I was like, okay, why is nobody buying tickets? Because there's too many free events. <laughs> so we decided to keep it with Christmas. I like it. it's, it's enjoyable. Thank you so much. We appreciate that. <laughs> Any other questions? On my side, no. Thank you. Great. Thank you. And I do have um, our venues and our. Can I give us a sneak preview of? Oh, it's fantastic. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, come on. <laughs> no, um, really, um, we did a. Busties. We did a survey um, back in the winter time. You know, usually. Um, like around January, and uh, we actually went out and put it out there um, to all of our patrons and all of the people that follow us on our newsletter and asked them just what they liked, and we had different categories and everything, and overwhelmingly, surprisingly, they love the tribute bands. And <laughs> they, they do. They love the tribute bands. But we also have a very strong community theater uh, component, and that actually helps us with our grants and everything. Plus, it's our community being, uh, you know, included and taking pride in the city, and they love it. We do um, most. We actually have Beauty and the Beast coming up, and you can go to Don't Be Afraid of the Dark this weekend. That's their their last weekend. But most of the um, community theater we do at the Cultural Center, and it's a nice, you know, intimate venue. And we do six shows, you know, per. Uh, t show title and they're always sold out. We people love them and it's a feel good kind of thing. Plus they like being in the community, uh, the cultural center too. That is a nice. Yeah, that's a nice thing. cozy but, venue. But yes, we have a really awesome uh, new season coming up. I'm very excited about it. So uh, stay tuned. You still have to wait, but yeah, you still yeah, have to wait. I'm, we're yeah. not getting the sneak preview. August first. <laughs> I just uh, side note that we'll move along with the budget. Uh, I remember. The one schedule that came on, it listed several tribute bands, mm -hmm. and then it said the Eagles, <laughs> without the tribute band. <laughs> oh, the Eagles, come that on, was come an on. error. I kind of logically figured. Well, I will say with great pride that we take great pains to find the best tribute bands because they're not all created equal. <laughs> no, they're not. So, no, yes. they're not. Everybody we bring in to the Tarpon Springs Performing Arts Center is A-rate. So. Thank you so much. Good. Thank you. Thank you. Moving along. He's lingering in the hallway. I'm sure he'll be. There's the lingerer in the hallway. <laughs> oh, he's ringing a lot. Tom, you don't have to present. We already decided. <laughs> oh, I'm going to cut 10%. Deny everything. <laughs> well, I, I can he's used to that, though. <laughs> I could be on the first tee in 20 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, go slowly. Go slowly. <laughs> so we have to get to your page. You cover a whole lot. Okay. Well, how's everybody doing today? I didn't bring any type of slides. I'm not much into the slides and the uh, and the PowerPoints over here. Uh, and for those who don't know me, my name is Tom Funch. I am the Public Works Director. I've been here 20 years. In the last 12, as almost 12 years as a director at Uh I have uh, uh, actually 13 uh, budgets in here. Uh, four of them are general fund, eight of them are enterprise funds, and one is an internal fund. The internal fund, of course, is fleet. So I'm happy to touch on uh, a couple of highlights along here, and I'll start right off with uh, facilities maintenance. It's on page 80. Okay. Right. Uh, some minor changes here. We actually did uh, uh, bring out a full-time employee this past year, so that's why you'll see the uh, uh, salaries up a little bit. Uh, I think that was about uh, forty-four thousand uh, dollars. Other uh, other things we'll touch base on too was the uh, contractual uh, other contractual services uh, that come down a little bit. That's air, basically related to air conditioning. That's on line uh, 30, 34. and we had to change out some air conditionings over there, so we were able to reduce some of those uh, costs along with that. Uh, Significant decrease, huh? Mm-hmm. $26,000, yes, sir. I'm sure I'll make it up this year. 
Mm -hmm. come back. <laughs> the, price, the price of the things going on right now is definitely going to jump up a little bit over here. And most of my uh, changes here are basically have to do with uh, uh, personnel issues, that's all. And not issues, I should say, but uh, some jumps. That's pretty much I got to say on uh, facilities. If you have any questions, I'd be more than happy to answer them on that. There's another big uh, reduction item. Uh, let me make sure I have my ruler here straight. Repairs and maintenance? Yeah, and that's, again, that ties into the air conditioners, most of that stuff. Really, yeah. that and plus the yeah, exactly. one up above for 26000 mm hmm Yeah, and we've had some units on the top of the roof here. Are you just handing out fans? No. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Taking all the complaints from the phone calls. I don't have to spend so much money on, on the phone anymore. Yeah, we've, we've replaced some air conditioning units on the top of the roof here, which were actually giving us trouble for a while. So the reduction of new units coming in, they're much more efficient, of course. Right. And I'm not spending as much time on those over there. So that's, he also that's had, an ongoing pro program, too. He also had the termite tinting of the Safford house last year's budget. Yeah, last year there was also, ter uh, yes, exactly, which was one this year, too, but it wasn't quite as much money, so. Another termite mm -hmm, tinting yes. yeah, for, for which we, we are doing the... Uh, uh, Heritage Center. Okay. Mm -hmm. so that's actually it always classes. looks like the circus has come to town. Mm -hmm. It does, don't it? <laughs> first yes. time I saw those was only when I, since I'd come to Florida. <laughs> Why can't they just have a blah colored like the wall? Can't they make it red and purple and green? And it does, well, I guess it. Maybe with those circuits not being around anymore, maybe they'll just get some regular color. They want people to know that there's poison. Yeah, that's the biggest thing. Oh, the poison, yeah. yeah that's, that's the biggest one. Okay. okay. That was Before we jump ahead, sure. throw it out to see if anybody else has any questions. With that said, onward, Tom. We'll move on to the other one. Uh, my next one would be on page 92 is your uh, parks and parkways. Uh, and that was uh, some changes on the personnel on that slide too, which was on line 12, has to do with uh, uh, position we were approved with last year, and then also uh, upgrade for a couple of positions within the department. And that would come up about $27,000 additional. Uh, other couple of things I have here, some, some additional costs would be on line 46 under repairs and maintenance. Uh, so, of course, that re maintenance and repairs are actually, as we increase more uh, facilities and more playgrounds and things like that over here, that, of course, they need maintenance and upgrades, so those costs are going up. Uh, and then vehicle maintenance, which is the next line down, which is 4604. Uh, that's up $34,000. We have some very old equipment. We've been patching and welding up and keep it going over here, but that's really putting a, uh, a little bit of pressure on the maintenance over here. So, But hopefully eventually somewhere down the road we'll be able to replace some of that equipment. I have I got a couple of vehicles that are 15 to 16 years old. I got a uh, Sand Pro, which we use on the ball fields uh, for grain oil ball fields. That thing was, we just replaced that. Actually, we brought it, uh, we brought the one from the Little League. They had their own they never used, so we brought that one this past year. But the other one was uh, probably about 25 years old. It just seen its life. Couldn't stretch it out any longer. <laughs> 25, huh? Yeah. Yeah, old piece of equipment. And we have some old vehicles in there, too. We have some uh, old dump truck. We have a, we just got rid of a 1996 uh, Chevy pickup truck. And we have a, a 2000 Ford rack body that's probably about to uh, see its grave. So, Well, they've got, got to give them credit. They've done a lot of, got a good work keeping them going. And, price of vehicles nowadays, I guess that's really not too bad. So. Uh, the other budget I have, which kind of marries up with the uh, uh, parks and parkways, is also Anclo Nature Park, and that's a park that sits on the north side of the river. Uh, of course, that's, that park was the city uh, purchased that park through a, a grant, so we have responsibilities on obtain, maintaining that grant every year. We do some reports on it. So there's uh, some additional increases in the budget this year, and that's pretty much for the uh, Shell we utilize for the trails out there. We're going to have to redo a lot of those those trails. So that's why the, the biggest increase in that department. And we kind of work in conjunction with the regular park department to kind of share. There's a couple of people that are dedicated are dedicated through the budget there, but we help out each way and just keep that park in tip top condition. So, and that's as far as parks, parkways, and Anclote Nature Park. 
unless you got questions on that. So Ankle Park, it'd be worthwhile to go see it. I've never seen it. I'll tell you, it's a great park. I don't know if you've had an opportunity to walk up there. It ties right along the Anclote River. Yeah. It's up off of Dixie Highway. It's just a nice spot to walk around. We have a nice little pier. You can stand out there and look into the water. A lot of people fish off there. There's a couple spots if you want to take a kayak. You can slide a kayak up off of there. So it really is a nice, nice spot. It's probably going to get more popular we, when we ever finish up the, uh, the, the rest of the trail up to the Pasco County line. That passes right through the middle of that park. So I'm sure we'll see some more, some more use there. So. But it is a pretty nice. If you never got a chance to go up there, I, you should go up there, Claire. You can hit golf balls into the water out there if you want to. I could. Yeah, yeah. You could set up a little driving range. <laughs> Make a money produce something. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Okay, next one will be on page 136, and that is my roads and streets department. Yeah, this is a general fund. Uh, biggest increase here pretty much on this uh, is going to be vehicle maintenance. And that's kind of the same things I'm having with uh, the Parks Department over here. We have some trucks that have to be replaced, uh, repaired. And as they get older, of course, they're getting close to their uh, useful life over here, so the maintenance costs go up. Of course, some of the stuff you'll see, and we're going to see it more as we go along here, is the cost of fuel. That's, that's jumping up quite a bit over here. So it's more than doubled, I think. It almost doubled Ron since last year, I believe. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> One of the things we have done, and I'll talk about this a little bit, and we've used it throughout the uh, other departments, is the use of these little Kubotas. Now, if you see these little orange, orange oh, yeah, rigs running little. around over here, right. that actually cut, saves out a lot of work. They're, 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 they're not very expensive. They run about $15,000 a piece. Extremely fuel efficient. Uh, get us in and out of a lot of places where at once a year, you just go up with a bigger truck to go and do some work, and then you had to carry material into the woods. These things can actually get into some of the tough areas we have to get into. So they've actually been kind of the godsend. So. Small and powerful, yeah. Yeah, and useful too, and it helps out on labor side too. We'd love the, the more efficient I have on my equipment, the less labor I need, which we know what the cost of labor is nowadays. That's about the only thing I got as far as roads and streets go. Any questions on that? Bear with me just a second. You're I'm, next. I'm, I'm well, you're, you have a kingdom here. <laughs> uh, the next budget uh, we can talk about quickly is 136. Uh, I'm sorry, I take that back. I apologize. It would be uh, the recycling grant, which is 193. Uh, not much to say about this. This money is uh, some of the money we get from uh, recycling. Uh, we do utilize those funds a lot of times to buy uh, picnic benches, picnic tables, things like that. It actually becomes a very handy and takes a little bit of a load off some. Uh, the parks department as far as placing benches when I can. So come again one more time. We utilize those funds. Actually, when you when you are recycling, we pick up. Right. Race magic. They bring it down, and when they can sell it in the market, those funds come, some of those funds come back to the city. I utilize those funds over here to offset some costs. Anything that's considered recycling, I can purchase through this through this fund. So I'll buy picnic benches, park benches, things like that over here. So anytime I can utilize recycled materials, and I try to as much as I possibly can. Uh, we try to utilize this fund here. Even on some of your lumber, on your trucks, decking, you know, all your composites over here, if it's marked off recycling, we can utilize those funds. So is the revenue from recycled plastic, and is that through China? Is that what that is? It used to be. China's not buying anymore. So those funds are actually going down. So we're being a little more cautious on how we spend this. But, yeah, those the recycling is in a little bit of a, I can talk to that as we get through it a little bit more, is in a, in a very much of a big stage, changing stage now, because China stopped buying our materials. Uh, there's a lot on the market. We're probably, right, I think the last month we were actually in a negative. I think it was the last month we were in negative, I think, uh, on recycling, if I remember correctly. Uh, so the market is very weak on it. So where does, where, where does the plastic go if it's not recycled? It's getting recycled, but a lot of it ends up getting, getting stockpiled. Uh, actually, some of it, TVs pretty soon, the recycled TVs will actually be going to the burning plant. 
they can burn those plastics. So sometime in the next month or two, you'll see Pinellas County uh, making that, that call. But Hillsborough County is where we started. Okay, and our contract is with waste management. Yes, yes ma'am. do we get some sort of audit or certification about wh where these recycled materials go? Do we get anything besides we get We have a list of all the materials that goes down there, and they give us what the market is and how much money we receive from the market. We get that quarterly. Right. What I'm saying is a lot of times it's not really recycled. And so I'm wondering what the watchdog is on waste management to prove that our efforts aren't wasted for the recycling. The, the state monitors them pretty, pretty tightly on that. Uh, and you'll find out that as you start getting more into their, uh, and I've had, I'm sorry I don't have it with me right now, but uh, uh, the amount of material they do, they, we do recycle now. I'll take Tarpon Springs, for instance. We, about 40% of the residents here recycle, which is actually pretty high in the county. It's one of the higher in the county. By the time the material ends up getting down to the recycling center, which is down in, uh, in St. Pete, uh, they separate it right there. They have their own recycling place that re separates it. A lot of that ends up going back into the garbage because it gets contaminated. Right. People are throwing food into it and things like that. So you probably lose about 25 or 30 percent of that just because of contaminated material. They separate it, and then they try to get to certain markets sometimes. You know, aluminum will go to aluminum markets, plastic will go to plastic markets. If they don't, they stockpile until hopefully somebody comes and takes it. And, if not, then somewhere along the line, they just, I think, and I'm not 100 percent sure, I can guarantee this, they'll either store it there or they'll send it off to somebody for no cost, or actually negative cost. So, so only about 40, I know it's high, relative, 40 mm percent -hmm. of Other the people? households yeah. recycle? Yes. Mm -hmm. yes, sir. It, it fluctuates every year, 43, ballpark. 44. I'm ballpark. ballpark. That's pretty much it, yeah. You would think it'd be more, but it's, it's, it's not as much more. And that's the ones that, that's the ones we know are, uh, that are contained. You know, some of them might be a higher percentage, but a lot of times they'll go up there and they have the open containers. That's why we have the open containers. We don't have the, the mechanical ones, because at least the driver has a chance to look at the material and say, wait a minute, somebody put pizza in there, they put this in there, I'll yeah, take the load. Like, we don't put it in. Yeah. Uh, that, because they tried the mechanical in Hillsborough County on the recycling. It was a, it was a failure, because people would just fill up a 35-gallon container with everything, yeah. and once you put it in a, 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 a load of truck. A pizza box. <laughs> I, no, no, I no. heard on, uh, yeah, I don't know, is a pizza box okay? You should not put a pizza box in it, no, the grease. That, it's got grease, and yes. any, anything with mm. grease is not okay. I, I don't. And not everybody eats the crust, so you get the crust in there, yeah. too, so yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and the Coke and the empty beer cans and things like that, so, so they all end up in there, so. Subject matter for our it, meeting. Yeah. So, <laughs> so our contract with waste management, that's an expenditure. That's an out, right? I mean, that's not because of the revenue from the plastic that doesn't really get bought. So we pay waste management. Uh, well, Ron could probably speak to that better than I can speak to it. Over well, yet. we got the waste management contract with the fees. So we got the revenues that we're yes. billing the residents for the garbage, the refuse recycling service. But then, yes, we pay the contract. Waste Through those revenues. Monthly. Okay, so, so that gets to my real question. So what's our contract cost with waste management for just that? For the recycling? For the course? recycling. $28 million. Uh, <laughs> well, that, I remember that's that. a total contract, yeah. $26 million. I'd million. i probably get to you, you know, with the exact figure, what portion of that is the okay. recycling okay. portion. I'd be really curious about that. You know, what we've got in the budget here, if you look on the recycling, I think it's about 800000 that we are paying, if that's what mm -hmm. we raise. Once we get back to the sanitation fund here. So what my reading has told me is that the recycling is, doesn't really happen. Basically, it doesn't really get recycled, especially since China is not buying the plastic anymore. So the efforts of the citizens might actually just be a waste of time, and we're spending whatever amount of money for this concept that we're actually recycling. That's kind of where I'm going with this. Mm -hmm. It's just something to look at, because a lot of us are pretty passionate about recycling. And anyways, it might not, sh not actually be really Manatee happening. Manatee County has just recently stopped doing curbside pickup on recycling. They're actually encouraging their residents to actually bring the recycling material to, to the sites. But Tom, we brought that to waste management attention yes. that we wanted to, you know, that we were going to be watching that. So we did bring that to their attention mm -hmm. because we hear it not only here, but all over that happening, just what you said. And we brought it to their attention that if we find out or mm -hmm. know that's the case and stuff, that us, the city and their residents are not going to be happy about that. Now, how we monitor and know for the truth, that's another way down the road. But we did call their attention to at least our citizens and the importance of that and not wasting their efforts for it to go in. We know it happens some, but they have assured at least me and you that their efforts were going to be to use them all. Now, again, how do we go about and actually see that that's the case and stuff? That's another area we have to... And this, it, 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 we're not the only municipality with those same concerns over oh, there. They, they, they're a big issue. of it, yes. Yeah. A huge issue all over the place. And 
they're dealing with it the best they can. They are they are uh, monitored down at their, their site anyhow. I know the state goes in there and does inspections and they get their audits, you know, runs the expert on all this. I know that a lot of recycling uh, drops when oil is cheap, so I would have expected the amount of plastic being recycled to be up with gas prices, so I'm surprised. Because China is the only consumer of the plastic. That's the only yeah. place that buys it, and they're not buying it anymore, so therefore there's no revenue in the plastic. Yes. And so the reality of our plastic mm -hmm. bottles that take 300 years to degrade is not happening. Mm -hmm. It's just, yep. like he said, being stockpiled. So we're really not recycling. That's kind of where it's the tail wagging the dog. Mm -hmm. Oh, we're uh, hoping the market changes. You know, hope in one hand and, you know, that old saying, so... Yeah. Recycling futures. <laughs> so I'm, I'm just saying yeah. if we're spending, let's say, a million dollars or two million dollars or whatever for this concept of recycling that isn't really happening, then why bother? That's my... The only way to help it is, is actually, like I know Manti County's stopped the curbside over here. At least you don't have the, the, the cost of the trucks going by all the time. That's a big expense. And if you talk about it, environmentally, you don't have that many more trucks on the road. So that, that in one way is... It doesn't offset it, but it's definitely a little bit better than wasting the trucks. Those trucks are heavy. They use a lot of fuel. Uh, so, yeah, exactly. So. I haven't seen anything yeah. from waste management or city. It's like a PR pitch about recycling. In it's the on. Last several years. Do we, we do that? We ever? have it on. We've had it on the uh, television side. I was actually on that for a number of years. Maybe probably. that's why. That <laughs> that yeah, we're, we're trying to change that up and maybe get some more we get viewers. Well, well, maybe when they recycle me, it'll it's pick up a little bit. So <laughs> I'm getting used to the end of my useful life, too. So. Yeah, once you're end, end of your useful say life. No, but I know what you're thinking. Yeah, I'm so, saying. Yeah. It so is a bad actually, sanitation. That has happened. I just missed it. But we, knew yes. to, we do need to increase... Yeah. That from not only there but a city efforts, mm -hmm. um, we do need to increase those efforts to, to, you know, even go higher than that forty percent and do it. I'm just yeah, thinking there's do, a pretty do. big audience out there. The other sixty percent. Yeah. We we send them out. We send out. Some are fall in the category of they're lazy and they're not going to change and do anything. But with a little PR, I thought I would think that would pick up. We do we do some out there. We we send stuff out in the, in the Wharton bills on occasion. We have it online. Uh, Waste management is actually very good at uh, supporting our, our events, like the Fourth of July picnic. They'll be out there, and uh, they're pretty good at that. You know, they're, you know, they're after. They're, I said I don't, I don't think there's a lack of effort. Uh, I just think it's a lack of. Uh, we got to pick some things up. Remember, there's a long time in that contract deciding on that contract. There was a long period of time, so there wasn't going to be anything done until that got settled. So, But that's an effort that needs to pick up for the next year. But they've been a pretty good partner. So, And I don't know if it'll help. And, you know, the, the fund you're looking at right there, you'll see $150,000 budget. It, it's built up some money with the yard waste project. They were thinking about putting a recycling center out there with that $150,000 a drop-off place. So maybe that'll help bring that percentage up. Just there. took one of my points out there. Did mm -hmm. I see that? Stole one of my Myself, yeah. Yeah, I do. I would like to eventually, as you know, uh, the yard waste facility, which our green waste goes, all your yard waste goes, uh, that got moved across to Mears Boulevard when Mears Boulevard came through. So the scale house is being re re relocated out on the yard waste. The old yard uh, areas, I'd like to turn that into a, I'm hoping to, Mark, has going to be okay, yeah, into a recycling center. And I like to man it. I like to take my sanitation department and move them over there. Uh, put them in the office there, and they can run sanitation from that point, but it also put personnel in the area so when people do want to recycle, there's somebody there to help them out, take the stuff out of the cars, so make sure the plastic is going in the right bins, the glass is going in the right place, and the paper like that. So I, th I think that would be it would help both sides of it, too. So That's one of the things we find out. People end up going to the recycling areas that we have, like the one on Golf Road, and they just open up, and whatever's in their boxes, they're tossing in there and contaminating the loads. So somebody there would be helping out. So, my personal knowledge is that cardboard can't really be recycled. So, because it's the business I'm in, and so basically, when I take paper to because it's resold, when I take paper to be shredded, um, they only take certain kinds of paper because it gets resold on the market, and the cardboard they don't want because it basically just gets thrown back in the garbage. So, so again, that's just more of a question: is are we really recycling? And I know a majority of what I put in the garbage is cardboard boxes from Amazon. You know, that's mm. that's what I put there. I, again, as I can pull, we can pull up and look at the quarterly report. We get them and see how much is actually brought in and how, and where the prices are. And I can I can ask them for a, a little more detailed uh, audit. We've a, a report. We've asked them for it, uh, and I'll see if they have a state report or something. I can get that back. 
okay? A couple of them here, like uh, landfill closing, that has to do just with the, uh, the closing of the landfill the monitoring we have to do every year. That's permitted. Uh, we were hoping one of these days to get this uh, closed out, still considered an active landfill. Uh, we we're hoping to get it closed out in a few years, and that way it'll become just a brownfield, and this this will re uh, reduce those costs, and hopefully we can turn it into whatever the board would like to return it into. Uh, so, a lot of things we're looking we're at. looking at. We're looking at a lot of things <laughs> over here. Uh, on page uh, the two, on page are you done? You done? Uh, page. Oh, uh, yeah, I know. Yes, page, done page, with the uh, landfill. Uh, that the closed landfill? Yeah. Yep. We're closing on the landfill. <laughs> yeah, <close>. Next. <laughs> uh, uh, page 227 actually is yard recycling, and that's pretty much operated. Uh, again, there's one out of yard waste. We take in uh, green waste, uh, and we, we, we store it, and then we truck it off to another outfit out in uh, uh, Homothasa that actually turns into mulch material. Some of it does go to uh, a burning plant up in uh, Dade City, I believe, uh, some of the material there. We have done and lately is uh, changed some of the process there. They're actually processing on site. We are permitted to process on site, so they'll grind it there, and that way they're cutting down on where the trucks are going. So hauling it all to one location, separating it there, and then finding different areas to go. Now they're, they're actually come by every couple of months when we get to a certain amount of material, they grind it, and then we'll send it directly to the final final location. So that's actually been pretty successful. And it's important that I keep the yard waste facility open because the yard facility is also our area. God forbid we have a hurricane. That's where I do, we do all our separation, all our uh, hurricane uh, debris management out there. So uh, I won't bore you too much longer here. Uh, the other, other one I'll speak out quickly on is the marina. Uh, the city has the marina, of course, down in 100 Dodecanese. Uh, we did some upgrades to that uh, last year. That hasn't changed too much. It's actually pretty much uh, keeps itself afloat, or pardon the pun, uh, or a couple extra dollars once in a while. Ron's got to throw in there to keep it going. But uh, uh, it's been ex extremely busy year or so. I know revenues are, have increased quite a bit since we did the rebuilding out there. I know it's going to take a while to make up that difference. It's about $600,000 I think we put into the marina. So get a lot of good reviews on that. If you look on your local boating magazines and stuff, you'll see the reviews and the comments. It's, it's been not but positive. Yeah, very nice little area. Yeah, it really is a nice little marina. It's come out very well. Uh, one of my last ones here I'll touch base quickly is stormwater. We know how important that is around the city. I hear that, especially this season coming up over here. Uh, we're actually right now in the middle of a revenue sufficient study. Uh, Ron is handling that one with us uh, to see where are our revenues. Um, we, we've uh, down to a very, uh, we've done a lot of big projects. Unfortunately, one of the projects we're doing in the middle of right now, Gross Avenue out here, and unfortunately, the contractor went belly up over here, and hopefully that, that will start back up again. Uh, but this is, this kind of works in conjunction, actually, with roads and streets. They kind of work together. Even though the two separate uh, the budgets, uh, they have to work together because roads and streets complement stormwater. Stormwater complements roads and streets, and the same thing with the parks, too. Some a lot of things we've done in here. You've heard a lot of questions, a lot of concerns over the last uh, few months over here as far as uh, the Clean Water Act. I know we're, we're working with the county. We work with the county quite a bit on a lot of the permits. Uh, our uh, impaired water bodies, one of them is Anclo uh, Waterways, which is the bayou and the river, and now lately St. Joseph Sound. Uh, and it's actually been a very, a very positive relationship. Uh, we are that close to getting the, uh, the land cloak watershed off the impaired water bodies. Uh, that's been something that we didn't know if we'd ever get to, and it's been real positive. And the Roads and Streets Department, Stormwater, and the Parks Department got a lot to do with that. Uh, well, how you cut the grass, how you use fertilizers, things like that over here has a direct impact on those open waterways. And uh, Tony, who runs my Stormwater Department, unfortunately couldn't be here today. He's at a conference. Um, he's worked hard with them over here to change the way we fertilize, how we clean, how we mow, how we sweep, uh, and that's had a positive impact on the uh, on that waterway. So that may, this may change when the study comes through. I'm not exactly sure how much it change, hopefully for the better. Uh, but this is uh, a very uh, 1.3 million dollars is uh, I think what we spent last year. 1.8 million. I'm sorry. Uh, so it's a pretty intensive. Uh, department. It's very busy. We get called on everything from puddles in the roads to, of course, as you see, when the, the tides come up and the roads flood, these are the guys are out there uh, doing their best to control the traffic and do the best they control with the floods. But we're on a, on a good path on, on the storm. We're very happy where we're going with this over here. That's great. So. 
And the last but not least, if that's all any questions there, is on page 331 is the fleet maintenance. Uh, that's an internal fund. Uh, this department actually handles three mechanics. I have uh, two people in the office. I have a supervisor and I have a, a, a maintenance clerk in there. Uh, they handle over 500 pieces of equipment, everything from chainsaws to fire trucks. Uh, we're one of the few departments in the, actually the county here that has uh, uh, a full EVT. We have two people are EVT so between uh, fire trucks, it's emergency vehicle technicians, fire trucks, and uh, police cars. These guys are very good. They're very efficient. Uh, they work very hard. If you ever get a chance, to go over and take a look at the depart over that uh, shop. It's it's always full and always going along, but they do a phenomenal job for the amount of people they got here. So, and while I'm always up to ask around for a little more money, I don't know why, so I'm open to any questions on that. Now, this says being an internal services fund. Of course, it's it's paid from the other departments on the on the maintenance. Well, whether it's the parks or the police or the fire. Yeah, like all the different vehicles. Yes, exactly. Exactly. So. I'm open to any questions there, concerns? Nothing from my side. Claire's still looking. I'm good. How's that? I'm good. Claire's still I looking. I was just trying to you, get you, my you, line straight. And make sure. <laughs> well, uh, I just that, that's a loaded one. <laughs> fuel line item on everybody's budget. Fuel's oh. doubled, if not more. And, mm -hmm. and I don't see that reflected. I mean, I see like a 30, 40%. But we're in, I just think we need to really look at that across the board. Well, with the latest charge, yeah, we might need to revisit that and increase yes. it some more. Fuel is in the process now of replacing one of the fuel tanks, too. That they're, they've been there since 1990, so we'll be replacing the fuel tanks. Mm -hmm. Do, do so. Yeah, uh, definitely worth looking oh, at. But I hate uh, to make one-off changes till you know oh, some things that are going on, right on the in on the, the right other side. areas, uh, such as right when you turn you know, the Dota tax the right revenue, side. insurance. Okay. Yeah. There are some big yeah. question marks. Right, out right there. past Pappas, like right next now. door to it. Mm -hmm. But one to keep in yeah. mind. And it'll call upon you to look in your crystal ball. It's one of the best crystal balls going. <laughs> yeah, fuel interest rates. Yeah, you Yeah, fuel fuel's gonna be a big one next next year, so it's a huge expense. You don't think it's all gonna drop down to Do I think it is? <laughs> Eventually. Eventually. Eventually that, you know, or Okay. I hope so. That's pretty much all my. I think Paul's lingering in the lobby, so Paul's going out. You exit, it. have him enter. Yeah, I hope I can I get in with a You're a tough act to follow. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think I'll take that as a compliment, Claire. Thank you. I appreciate positive. it. Yeah. Only positive. <laughs> so headcount wise, you're okay. Headcount wise? Yeah. I only got one head. No, sorry. <laughs> Overall, I know last year, at the end, uh, we have the one additional headcount. We got the, we got that person in the, in the parks department, which was great, and I appreciate it. The problem I'm having is getting uh, applications. I still have a position that's been open for about six months, and I can't get ap I get applications. Uh, I had a couple of people come in, and they lasted like one or two days. It's it's hard work, but uh, just get the applications is tough right now. Very tough. So, so if I apply, then <laughs> well, I would have to look at that one. The hard I'd work. have to look at that very closely. Not so not yeah. Work. You could probably outwork some of them young ones that come in and don't make it two days out there in the heat and stuff. So yes, we won't go into that. old timers. We won't go into that. You keep on having with HR trying. Yeah, and we use we use every avenue we possibly can. I go. I do use uh, online. What was it? Um, oh, I, forget. I can't think of the name of the company off the top of my head over here. But we 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 advertise all over the place. I advertise in my uh, association, the Public Works Association. Uh, you know, Stormwater Association, we advertise for those over here and just don't see. But a lot of cities are in the same boat. They all are. Yeah. So, so it's not <laughs> like it's all after yeah. the same thing. And plus, you know, we have a little more. You, you know, you got to pass a background check, you know. <laughs> Imagine that. <laughs> exactly. In some cases, my, a lot of my people are, have commercial driver's license, so they have to pass a drug test. <laughs> Imagine that. You gotta be clean and sober. Okay, now make sure you make sure <laughs> I would you pass, pass through both of those requirements into the yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. Pass through and get Paul in here. Oh, I'm sorry. I've not spent too much time. Thank you very much. Thank you so Thank much. You. Thank you. Paul, you're on. We have a hard stop at three fifty five. Okay. Well, this was a very 
ambitious when I saw this guy doing some of the people with all the fun. This was a this was more ambitious than I would have put together, but but Paul knows. As you see, we're going back time. We got a hard stop, so you need to do the mark signal of pick pick up and fly. So. Good afternoon, Paul Smith, Public Services Director. I've got the management team with me from Public Services, and uh, I'm going to introduce them in just a minute, but they're here in case there's questions that are in a level of detail beyond what I can answer. Um, also with me here is Tommy Kiger. He's the Assistant Public Services Director. He'll be giving some of a presentation. We've got about 10 slides to go over. It's meant to summarize 16 budgets for you, hopefully in an efficient manner. If you've got some detailed questions, we'd be happy to answer them. We're going to ask if we can just get through the slides first, and then we can go to the questions. You, mean you don't want us to interrupt you the whole way? Well, you could, <laughs> but it might not get us there as quick. That's what I'm concerned about. So if that's all right, we'll go ahead. So the department's got um, several divisions, and we've got it organized on this slide by which ones are enterprise funds, which are funds that um, create their own revenue to pay their expenses, and then the general funds. Um, the enterprise funds are shown in blue, and the general funds are in green. And uh, we've got a new budget this year, sustainability, and you can see that on the far right, it's got a little bit of green and blue because it's funded from multiple sources. Um, as far as the team, um, in utilities, we've got Raymond Page. He's here. He's our utility superintendent. Good afternoon. The golf course, Howard Hunt's our golf course manager. Hello. Recreation, Jamie Taylor. He's not able to make it today, but his uh, assistant, Duffy Smith, is here. And uh, Cheryl Stedge is with our cemetery, cemetery manager. And sustainability, that's a new budget, as I mentioned. Robin Reeves, the sustainability coordinator, is here as well. And uh, finally, Public Services Administration, myself, and Tommy Kiger, who I introduced. And with that, I'm going to ask Tommy to take you through summary slides of the different divisions. Thank you very much, Paul. All right. And right here, just to get us all started, we've got a very quick summary of our budgets for all 16 uh, individual divisions. And you'll notice this is broken out by personnel, operating budget, and our capital outlays. And uh, one thing we did want to point out is we've got 117 staff. That's about a third of the city staff. And also, we wanted to point out that if you summarize this all up, it's about $17 million in expenses. And this is, you know, they range between these different categories, between about 5 and $6 million or so. So we've got about one-third dedicated to public or to personnel, about one-third dedicated to operating, and one-third dedicated to capital. Uh, we're going to go ahead and give you a quick overview of the various different uh, divisions. And uh, this is the Recreation Division. Uh, they run our City Recreation Center and also much of our recreation programming, like youth and adult uh, youth uh, sports leagues, the summer camps, and that sort of thing. And we also have some quick highlights on things that are unique to each budget. And in this one, we wanted to point out uh, contractual services and also our operating supplies. Those are critical to running our programming within that division. And the contractual services include things like fees for like yoga instructors or dance instructors for the various programs. And a lot of those um, costs are recaptured through user fees for those classes. Uh, we're currently recovering about 17% of costs in that group. Uh, next, we have the cemetery. It's a historic cemetery going back to the 1800s. Uh, we have four uh, full-time staff out there, and uh, again, we want to point out some unique things. Contractual services uh, are unique to this group. Uh, largely, that's burial services, grave digging, providing the rental equipment for uh, funeral services, and that sort of thing. And we have a couple of uh, capital outlay items, including restoring some of the cemetery walls on the, east, the west side of the cemetery, and also a couple of vehicles, a utility vehicle and a mausoleum lift. And we also want to point out here, this is another area where those contractual services are largely covered by uh, user fees when there are funeral services. Those are paid up front. Next, we have the water and wastewater utilities. Uh, the water utility, these are the largest group, um, uh, both by budget and by personnel. The water utility includes the water wells, our reverse osmosis water treatment facility, the water distribution system, which is the pipes that take the water from the treatment facility to your home or to your business, and also the meter shop, which is they take care of all the, the customer meters. That's the cash register for the water and wastewater utility. <clears throat> and next we have the wastewater utility, which includes the sewage collection system. That's the opposite of the distribution system. It takes the wastewater from your home 
to the treatment facility for treatment and uh, proper disposal. We also have the lift stations, which are the pumps that convey water from point A to point B, and the wastewater treatment facility, which provides the city with reclaimed water. A uh, couple of quick highlights on the water utility. Um, we want to point out for the, the water, for the water treatment facility, some of our large areas for our budget are electricity and operating supplies. Those are the things that go into treating and making our water safe uh, and for human consumption. Um, on the water distribution side, that's an area, that, and the meter repair shop, those are areas that are heavily focused on upkeep of the systems and their budgets are kind of heavily tilted towards the repairs and maintenance budgets for pipes and meter parts and things like that. And a couple of quick capital highlights, uh, we do have planned next year three new generators for our water wells to help improve our resiliency in the event of power outages to keep making water. Uh, we've got about a quarter, three quarter million dollars set aside for pipe renewal for the water distribution system to improve the water pipes. And also we've got another $100,000 for our ongoing meter replacement program to keep our meters in good shape and keep the cash register operating. Uh, next we have the wastewater utility, again, just like the water plant, we've got the wastewater facility, heavily tilted towards our 15 full-time staff and our electrical costs to pump and treat the water, uh, provide oxygen for water treat for wastewater treatment. Also, we've got our operating supplies. Those are all the things that go into producing reclaimed water. Um, the sewage collection system is, again, the analog to the distribution system, so that's uh, heavily tilt, uh, slanted towards repairs and maintenance, keeping our pipes in good working order, making sure that when you flush, everything gets to where it's supposed to go to the wastewater treatment facility. And similarly, our lift stations group is also our general utilities maintenance group, and they're focused heavily on repairs and maintenance, not just for the pumps for the lift stations, but also across the utility as a whole. And a couple of quick highlights for capital. On the wastewater treatment facility, we've got several major pump station rehabs scheduled for the next year, uh, renewing old pumps as they age out. Uh, we've also got some money set aside for design work for uh, rehabbing the electrical system of the facility. On the collection system and utilities, we've got money set aside for both pipe renewal and our lift stations to be rehabbed. And also we've got uh, about $180,000 for a new hydraulic model for the wastewater system that'll help in planning efforts. Up next, we have the golf course. The city owns and operates an 18-hole golf course, which operates as an enterprise fund. Uh, this is kind of unique in that they have two budgets in your budget book. They have one budget for the golf course and one budget for food service. Uh, they've got about 24 full-time, part-time staff. And we wanted to highlight uh, a couple of things here that are, again, unique to the golf course. So we do own and operate the golf course, but we do have a golf course maintenance contract where we contract out all the greens, uh, groundskeeping and things like that and the, the lawn care and that sort of stuff. Uh, that was recently bid a few years ago, and uh, it's made good improvements in the golf course conditions. And also, we uh, do a rental program for our golf carts. Um, and though, that way, we get new golf carts every three years. And also, it allows us to keep costs down and uh, let a third party take the depreciation on those capital assets. One other item that we really wanted to highlight for you for the golf course this year is our um, strong performance on revenues. Uh, the golf course is entirely self-funded through user fees, rentals, that sort of thing. Uh, it does pay for all of its operating costs. <clears throat> and uh, this year uh, through April, we've made about $1.6 million in revenue, uh, or I think 1.5. And our previous record for a whole year was 1.6. So you see that blue line? That's, our collect that's us collecting revenue over the course of the year. And it's much higher than the last several years, including going back to 18, 19 pre-COVID. And we just wanted to point out that uh, the managerial changes and uh, improvements to the course that Howard's implemented are really starting to pay dividends in increased course usage and increased revenues. And lastly, we have the sustainability budget. Uh, this one's a little bit smaller than some of the other ones that you'll see. This is largely an administrative budget that's relatively new uh, for the last year uh, to public services. Uh, it started with uh, the creation of our sustainability committee in 2019. And we wanted to point out that even though this budget's a little bit smaller, it's heavily focused on Robin being able to coordinate, our new sustainability coordinator, being able to coordinate sustainability efforts across multiple departments within the city. Uh, and we do have plans, and she's hoping to work with other departments to do capital improvements and things like that over time. But those will be funded out of individual departments as those are implemented, not through the sustainability program. So we just wanted to point that out as well. All right, and uh, here's some of our summer camp kids from this year, and uh, with that, I'll turn it over to Paul if you have any questions. 
All right. So how do we do? So what do we attribute the golf course up? I know. Have we had a? Are you a change in management? <laughs> and you can take all the credit. But how long have you been over there? Uh, well, uh, it would be eight years this August first. So I came in August first of two thousand fourteen. Because those numbers are huge. Yes. Been very good here the last two and a half. Well, everybody likes to ask why. Why do you think? That's okay. We're just having a discussion. Here. So it's a combination of things. Probably the biggest one is COVID. All right. COVID shut down the whole world. Nobody could go anywhere. Couldn't go to a bar. Couldn't go to a bowling alley. Couldn't go to a restaurant. Where could you go? Golfing. Golf course. Open outside. air. It was outside. Right. So golf became just a, a magnet for all these people that couldn't get out of the house to do anything else. So it brought not only new golfers to the golf course, but also probably some golfers who had quit in years past, had given up the game for whatever reason, hard, too old, whatever. There again, they couldn't do anything else, so they came to the golf course. Uh, we did change our maintenance contractor two and a half years ago, and they are much easier to work with. They like to listen better than the last ones. So we have really improved course conditions, okay? That drives golfers to your golf course. They don't want to play on dirt. They want to play on grass. So as long as you're doing well in that department, you will bring golfers to the golf course. And then, uh, you know, our, our staff has had a couple new hires, and they've been really good. Uh, our customer service, I would rank it probably tops in Pinellas County. And as we like to say, our our – mission statement necessarily but not necessarily but our thing is we're the best value of golf in Pinellas County so uh, our prices I like that statement that's yeah. true so, a lot of people over there struggling right making money mm -hmm. in the golf business that's correct mm -hmm. yep we did just do a rate increase though so did you but How it hasn't changed anything all part just five bucks cost you five bucks more around so don't pay that not a big increase <laughs> we'd like to keep our fees as I said, the best value for Dallas County. What's 18 holes go for now? Uh, well, we have, right now it's 34 bucks. In the wintertime, it's 45. So very reasonable. Those are still yeah. excellent rates. Very reasonable. I mean, yes, for, sir. for a golfer. Yes, sir. Very oh. reasonable. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Anything else? Sustainability. How has it been? I know you have to work with a lot of different areas. And how, how have you been received? Well, I think well. Uh, Robin, if you'd like to stand up for a second um, so they can see you. I believe we hired you, I mean, how long ago? Sustainability. December of last year. Yeah, that's okay. And she's hit the ground running and uh, really reached out. We started a sustainability staff team with the city, different members of city staff. City managers helped us pick out which positions would be appropriate across the city. And Robin schedules those meetings. In fact, we've got one coming up real soon. And uh, so it's a way for us to um, start coordinating together, just like that title implies. We've been doing a lot of things individually in departments, yeah. Yeah. but this is gonna be a more coordinated effort. So far, so good, Robin? Yes. <laughs> The big area you can't pick can't pick your part on the numbers <laughs> you, you uh, does anybody have any um, questions no concerns? maybe next year i don't know what you have planned for sustainability but um because i know we got kind of a summary overview of all the different i'm sure we'll get to that next year like whatever plans you have and kind of uh different things you're going to be doing one of the things we talked about with Ron is coding our capital projects, our investments with sustainability so we can track how much the city's spending on sustainability efforts because it really touches all of our departments, and that's something he said he could work on with us. Sounds good. Yeah, we got lucky. We got a good hire. We got a good hire for the position. Mm -hmm. That's real important, especially when it's your first. Okay. And we're not – we're doing it the right way. We're working on the planning – working with the committee, and then going forward. So we're happy to have her, and I'm sure when we have more time at another time here, we'll 
We'll, they'll have my gag order out and start talking a little more with the time, and you can hear about some more of the sustainability because it's really going to be exciting going forward. We're doing it the right way. We're not just jumping in and bypassing the planning and everything. We're doing it the right way. So you'll hear more, and we'll probably bring something back to you later on when we're not right in the budget and uh, talk a little bit about it yeah, and how it spreads through the whole city. That was, that was a crucial hire because the position needs to report mm -hmm. work with a whole lot of departments. Yes. And if the departments are saying, oh, no, we don't want to work. Yep. Very good. Good job. Keep it up. Thank you. Okay. Because it's a high level, I can't, I don't have any questions. I just have the hydraulic modeling that you mentioned. Is that, um, is that related to planned expansions of the wastewater treatment facility or? It would include that. It's really taking a look at our whole sewer system and seeing where the capacities are and where we might need to increase capacity. We certainly, that's one area you don't want bottlenecks is uh, the collection of the sewage. There's actually state laws that we need to be careful about not overflowing. And you'll hear stories in the news about sometimes other cities that have had that happen. So I think that's the number one thing, but yes, planning for the future is another thing. When developments come in and staff from this department reviews those things, that's one of the things they'll look to is what is the capacity of our system in that particular area. Is, who is, that's Raymond Page. Raymond Page is a big part of that, yes. Did you have any more questions for Oh, Ray no, or? no. Oh, okay. I, I'm, I own a manufacturing facility that makes headworks equipment for wastewater treatment oh, facilities. Right. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, oh, is there an expansion coming up? <laughs> okay, Paul. Thank you. Oh, thank you all. Thank, thank you, you yeah. team. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Go, go put another five. <laughs> another five dollars. Price elected. <laughs> Put another five dollars no. on. It's a good deal. Oh, it's probably right. should have, but it's okay. So. We'll get around to it later. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Okay. So we have a hard stop here. Yep. We did pack. We probably. Yeah. And you did. You got farther than I'd have bet you got. So. Uh, probably a whole bunch. But again, if there's any question, we come whatever our next meeting. If there's any questions, anything we went over too fast? Anybody you want to come back? What do we um, have? We have HR still left. Do we want to? Could we? Well, we're gonna have some other things. Schedule because I had three items yeah. that I wanted to kick around as a group. We need another one because we need to talk about some things, especially with some of the new things that's come up. The price. There'll, there'll be some other things. We'll def yeah. We'll definitely. Uh, so let's, let's schedule one additional yeah. meeting. I'll yeah. tell you what, I know these are kind of. I want to see what the, the reaction, you know, we, granted, we're dealing right now, we don't have all the numbers, right? Right? We all agree. But I want to see if we as a committee could put before the board some ideas just ideas to plant the ideas yeah. you know at the end of the day they need to get we all need to get more numbers but in the unassigned uh, funds balance area just to think about a number like mm -hmm. my number was five hundred thousand i can be we can be twisted and turned and we i'm hoping to get a discussion going on yeah but again i think we do need another meeting to go back and do some I other agree. things we can also pick up with with uh, the department we missed. We can also, again, if there's any of these people you want to bring back a little little more for some other questions, we can set them and bring them back. So this, I'm going to throw out two more ideas. Just think about it. Uh, I know what the market's like in terms of getting people. And it's, it's, it's tough right now. My question to be debated amongst the group before anything was presented to the board. You know, should we be looking at any, I'm gonna put it out there, a 2% additional in the current year, does, does that make any sense? Any sense at all? May not, it, it, open debate. Mm -hmm. uh, I know we, we had three in the budget, but are we finding? Are you talking about what are you talking about now? In this? A salary increase. Oh, in, I've already moved it to five. It's going to be moved to five. That's one of the things we got to talk about. In 
That, that's what we got. Three, or are you talking about doing something now? No, we, we're. He's already been. Uh, I've already put it through our payroll system, and, and the first that's one of the things. We, that's one of the things we have lines, to come back to. Uh, uh, and yeah, again, and my my thought was what I wanted to kick. Not push it out to the budget. You know, now's. We had a big county meeting of all the county city manager, county managers two weeks ago. We had the state conference, and we are and and those numbers I got. Um, again, that's one of the things we, can we kick, I need to we come back and another around. thing. I told her we got to move at least to five right now and then see. So that's one of the things I want to talk to you about in the next okay. meeting. Okay, that's and my last item was, uh, and I know we put headcount at the end of the budget. Yeah, but just to plant the seed with the commission to be and everyone be careful. I'd like to have. No headcount increase. I know that may not be possible. Uh, headcount, I know, is not necessarily a fixed cost, but it kind of is. It's a semi-fixed cost once you had a head. And I know we filled some pretty good positions last year that we needed, mm -hmm. but we're in the times of right now, cash is coming in. You know, can we look at the unfunded reserves, maybe pumping that up a little, little higher, at least in the budget for next year. My number five, half a million isn't locked in stone, but it was a conversation to start with the group. So if we could schedule one more meeting, and I had a question, I didn't know the answer. Why are the meetings at two o'clock? Right, that was the question. <laughs> okay. I think I understand I mean, I'm, it right I'm, now because yeah. the staff you would go into overtime, and that, well, I get that completely. Plus the availability of night meetings with the auditorium, with with the, the play. I said we're we trying to. I'm trying to schedule an extra. I was trying to schedule an earlier meeting, a budget meeting with the commission, another introductory because all the factors go on. I was having trouble finding a night because the night committals were almost maxed out. At evenings, you can set a regular meeting. Now you can probably set a special meeting, but. My biggest problem is when we do extra commission meetings, trying to find a night, and a lot of times we want to do it down there to get filmed and stuff. We could do it in this little office up here, but it's just there's a lot of there's a lot of problems with with that to, to look at. And uh, that's when this budget is this process is over. What? How often do, do we meet? Not at all, or weekly? Uh, it. it uh, this isn't a cop out answer, but we we have a relatively new board. If you asked me last last year, the board, uh, the mayor would use us a lot as a sounding board on difference of water increases. I I love that. Now it depends on how much the the new administration. I think the October to March schedule, which is sometimes light and we skip meetings, there may be the need for for those meetings that we could skip before, yeah. like last year and the year yep. before. We, we'll probably have a lot of times. That's the lull time. The but and there are some meetings we may be able to skip then just because we don't have the information yet to bring you. But but I don't I, I think we'll stipulate, be like stipulate twice a month. Right. And then you sometimes skip one. So it's down to once a month in the slower times. No, it's usually one. Usually uh, usually once. once a month. But budget times. it's oh, oh, so these rules the that you emailed out are just budget time. Right. Okay. Yeah. So we've never had morning meetings either. I mean, that's at the time when the committee was created. Yeah. They, they passed their board, their rules, which was I included. Um, they set the meetings at 2 o'clock if you want to do it earlier, something in the morning. I don't know what you're, what you're thinking, mm -hmm. but it would require a change to your rules. So. Okay, we'll catch you time. catch you next time. But again, that's an item. Again, we can discuss more as an item on the yeah. next. We meeting. can put it on the agenda as an item. Yeah. I work for Citibank. How about you? I was going to ask you the same thing. We'll, we'll see. Management records and management technology. Okay. Uh, uh, obviously, public comments. No. Any other staff comments? No. Board comments. Anybody else? This is grinding. <laughs> Next meeting. Thank you. Have a great one. Next we meeting. We do want. So you tell me we can do another. Oops. Yeah, sorry, it's my That's laptop. okay. <laughs> so do you want new, another meeting in June? I have. You can do next Thursday or the following, which is the thirtieth. 
the 23rd or the 30th? I have jury duty on the 23rd. Okay. <laughs> so I just, just to let you know, I won't be here that day. I was going to say 30th anyway. 30th. 30th? I mean, and maybe we could discuss those handful of points. I, I want an open discussion. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, like, you're nuts or, you know, you know we think this or. Because your next meeting, your regular meeting, wouldn't be until the 21st of July. of July. So the 30th, or if sun happens, everybody looks at the commitment, it changes, probably the 7th would be the next of it, you know. But we can gear for the 30th and hear from anybody, the people not here, how the, how the 30th is. I can okay. put an a email out when I go downstairs. Let's go for the 30th. 30th? Okay. Okay. Let's move future agenda items. I know we've touched on a few, mm -hmm. and we'll have the final but, uh, HR uh, is the only department left. Um, anybody, anything else? 407, running a little late. Officially, the meeting is adjourned at 407.